All right. Well, we bless you tonight, and we're here releasing the heart of the Father. It's uh, April the 16th. It's a Sunday night. It's the third Sunday of the month. And we've been so excited about joining with you tonight. Uh, remember, this is very, very important. The Josiah Company Convocation. You might say, why did you call it that? Josiah uh, was a young judge, eight years old. But it said that he was the most outstanding judge during his time or any after him. And God is raising up through a prophetic word that came a few years ago, a Josiah company of people in this nation. And uh, we're going to be gathering April the 20th, Conway, Arkansas, great facility. We're going to be praying for the nation for three days. We've got some excellent uh, friends coming in, uh, hosts that have been on the uh, daily call with us. Dutch Sheets has joined us. Kim Malone and Cheryl are coming up from Florida. Brother Jim Hodges, Jackie Tyre, Regina Shank. Um, David uh, Hurdle and Dan Blackster, uh, Ann Tate's coming from Texas. It's going to be a tremendous time. So plan to, uh, to join with us. And remember, we start back tomorrow at 222, praying for the states. We've prayed now for 50. We're going to begin on Monday the 17th for Montana. And then Tuesday night at 9 p.m., we'll, we will do Hawaii. And then on Wednesday, South Dakota. Then on Thursday at 2.22 uh, Maine. And did I leave one out there? Uh, yeah, North Dakota will be Wednesday. Uh, South Dakota will be Thursday. And Maine will be Friday. Sorry about that. But anyway, tonight we're going to get in uh, to uh, uh, something I think will help all of us operate better in these times. And what I want to talk with you about is adding values to yourself by adding value to others. I'm going to begin with the uh, book of Colossians, chapter 4 and verse 6. Incredible scripture. It said, let your speech always be filled with grace. Now, let's talk about this word grace for just a moment. You've, if you've joined me any at all, you've heard me preach. I, I use this a lot. Grace is greater than unmerited favor. Yes, it's unmerited favor, but it's something far more significant, far uh, greater than that. See, grace is God empowering you to be who he's called you to be. It's an empowering that we need. And so grace, so it said, your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, salt, purifies, salt preserves, and salt draws out the taste that is already in a food. So when we are salt, we're going to bring purification. We're going to bring it, that preserving factor. But when we're salt to other, we're going to help them getting in contact with their true identity, and we're going to draw out of them who they really are. That many that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Now, within this scripture here, there's so much about adding values. I want to read it to you now from the Passion Translation. It said, walk in the wisdom of God as you live before the unbelievers and make it your duty to make him known. Let every word you speak be drenched with grace and tempered with truth and clarity, for then you will be prepared to give a respectful answer to anyone who asks about your faith. Listen, we should stand out. We should stand out uh, in a crowd. We should stir up hunger. We should be that sweet smelling savor uh, that stirs up somebody's hunger for Christ. You know, think about that restaurant you like to go to. I, what I always think about when, when I teach on this, I think about my uh, grandmother uh, Bennett. I called her mama. She was quite a cook. And when you walked in, she she actually, after my uh, papa died, she ran a, a, a country store, but she's all the time cooking. You walk into that store, 
you could smell the cooking and it stirred up an appetite. There was another lady in my, uh, in my life, Miss Hattie Walker, uh, in my hometown. And you, you know, those days we didn't have cabs on tractors and air conditioning a lot. And if you just drove by Miss Hattie's house, you could smell, uh, turnip greens and fried chicken and those things. And it was stir up an appetite. That's what we need to be to people. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24, it said, and let us consider one another. You and I consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. That's why we assemble. That's why it's so important to have a body of Christ that you can be a part of. And I love the streaming that we do, but I'm telling you, there's time. We need to come together and be in the same room so we can encourage each other. I could go on and read from the message, but I'm going to move to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. It said, you are the salt of the earth, but if that salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Listen, we must realize there's too much uh, competition. A prophetic word came forth as we prayed over the state of Kentucky this week. And the word talked about the competition there. It talked about the sons of Eli. It talked about that God wasn't looking for us to, to be in uh, competition. We don't need to be comparing ourselves to others. We need to compare ourselves to him and, and receive his grace. But Norman Vincent Peale made this quote, and it's a very good one. He said, to be successful is to be helpful, caring, and constructive to make everything and everyone you touch a little better. The best thing you have to give is yourself. I want to tell you, when we show care, you know, you've heard this. They don't care how much we know till they know how much we care. You know, people, people are hurting today. Times are hard. Susan brought groceries this week and she was telling me how much she spent. I, I want to tell you, two trips to the car and I, by myself, I could have carried it all in. And, uh, it just, and, and we're blessed, but there are those that are not in that place and they're hurting right now. You know, recently we were somewhere with a family in a restaurant and they were coaching their children on what they could order and not order. I could tell their budget was tight and I caught the waitress. I said, don't let them know but you bring me their ticket and I paid for it and I blessed them, you know, and I hope that increased their budget for more gas that week or whatever it is that they needed. I didn't know them. Uh, I didn't know them at all, but my heart went out. I can remember when I was in that place that we had, to, you know, I, I remember that how we carried a two liter Coke, and our car and we'd go by this is a long time ago but we'd go by and we'd get sometimes we'd be able to get a 29 cent hamburger from mcdonald or if we really spurred we get a 39 cent cheeseburger and i remember you know those days and how god worked with us and we were faithful and we came through it so let me tell you a way to add value to people and that is to convince them they can make a difference. My friend, look at me. I'm looking at you. You do make a difference. I don't care where you're at. I don't care how hard it's been. I don't care how much you're struggling. I don't care what's going on. I have news for you uh, that you can make a difference. And so, uh, we add value to people when we truly place a value on who they are and not just what they do. Let me just tell you, relationships are not built on what people do for us or we can do for them. It's built on who we are to each other. You know, we must be that encouraging. And let me just take a side note here and just say, I had announced in an email that my sister is battling with colon cancer and um, her birthday's tomorrow and the chemo and, and radiation she's on has really been tough. She, uh, this, you know, just been tough. 
and many of you, maybe some of you listening, have written her and encouraged her and you're praying for her. She told me tonight, said since all those cards and notes and things started coming in, it's just gotten easier for her. I want to tell you, uh, I'll say this later, we need each other. And we need, this nation needs a big old dose of how much we need each other so we can come together. But see, we add value to people when we truly place a value on who they are and not just what they do. See, let me tell you three reasons that God values you. And he values me, values Susan. I believe that God even values Harley, my dog that's over here listening to me. But listen, who, who you are. You are your own individual snowflake. My calling you a snowflake, but I'm telling you, there's nobody else on the earth that's like you. You know, if Susan was helping me preach this, she would tell you I'm as near like Bob Nash, my dad, as anybody. I mean, you know, she's actually questioning whether we were cloned. I was cloned from him, but I'm still not exactly like him. And you are an individual and you carry diversity and your diversity is strength. So be who you are. And second thing, the reason God values you, he paid for your life of destiny by giving his only begotten son. This is so important. His only begotten son, who we just celebrated Resurrection Sunday. It's a resurrection year. It's a resurrection life. He brought it forth through that ultimate sacrifice. And then number three, he also values you because of who you are becoming. I had a spiritual father named Warwick Shenton. He was from the UK, lived in Wales, uh, just an incredible man that impacted my life in a tremendous way. And I used to love it when Warwick would point his finger at us and say, you're all greater than you've yet become. My friend, that's you. You're greater than you've yet become. We're all becoming greater because he's working on us. He's forming us. And he is is bringing us to that place that our value is increasing. Let me give you a sign of truly valuing people. Believe in them before they believe in you. Believe in them before they believe in you. See, it's wonderful when people the people believe in leaders, but it's more wonderful when the leaders believe in the people. Years ago, I, years ago, (laughs) a long time ago, I was having trouble raising up leaders in a church and I had an apostle, in fact, an apostle Fred Bennett from Memphis. He said this to me. He said, they'll never be there till you see them there. And I have to tell you, it took me two or three months of praying to get the fullness of what he was saying to me. And I carry that truth with me today. It impacted my life because it, what he was telling me, those leaders you need to raise up are there, but because you don't see them, you don't devote the time and the sacrifice to develop. And when I shifted on that, I began to raise up leaders in a more. You see, it, 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 we must believe in people speak into them and prophesy into them. Second thing is when we got to believe in them before they believe in us, we got to serve them before we serve you. You know, every leader needs to be willing and get in there with the people that he's leading and get his hands dirty. That's my saying, but you gotta, you gotta be willing. Don't ask, you know, my dad, one of the leadership skills, Bob Nash taught me never ask someone to do something you're not willing to do yourself. Never ask someone to do something you're not willing to do yourself. It's so important. See, people who seek to win in life seek only to have success. But people who seek to bring blessings and value to others seek to live a life of significance and therefore experience pleasure by raising up successors successors. We've got to do that. And then the last thing I want to say about this, people will be drawn to you. People will be drawn to you. I want to give you a second value, uh, a, a second 
the way we add value to other people. And that's when we make ourselves more valuable. I remember when God said to me at 50 and four in my forties, I put down getting my, my uh, master's and doctorate. I decided, you know, I was going to be able to operate without it. And then the Lord, I turned 50. I'll never get, he said to me, I want you to go back and get your doctorate of theology and your master's. And, uh, you know, oh, you know, with it, we were just, uh, starting a new church, uh, planning to work in, in South Haven. There was so much going on. And I remember how it challenged me uh, to do it, but I stepped into it and I finished them and I studied and it, and it brought more value to me. And so we, we value other people, especially as leaders. And every person listening to me, you're a leader to someone. You, you're a leader to someone. Someone out there is watching you. You're leading them uh, with it. And so let me just say this. Albert Einstein said this. Gentlemen, try not to become men of success. Rather, become men of value. That's what it's about. Now, I want to end this and get into praying for some people. But uh, I'm going to just give you just a few of how to recognize you're in an environment for growth where you can value other people. Number one, you need to be in an environment where others place others ahead of them. True leaders will place others ahead. I could talk about my friend Dutch Sheet, Dutch and Cece were just with us on our 50th wedding anniversary and how the value that they brought to us by doing that or when we lost our granddaughter, Hannah Rain, and how Dutch, just recently having back surgery, drove hours to come and sit with Susan and I for two hours. I just couldn't believe, uh, you know, that I, I, I don't know why we said couldn't believe. I was amazed, but yet he's that type of man and that type of friend. Another way we do is, is, is that environment where you can place value you know, is a place you feel challenged. Listen. If your leader will challenge you, that means he values you, values you. I said to someone recently, the reason we're having this talk is because I value you. I care about you. I love you. I'm going to give you one more. And I'm going to, you know, it's an environment or it's a, uh, it's a place where you sense an atmosphere of affirmation as well as challenge. You know that when you're challenged, uh, you know, my dad, I remember the first time my dad told me, this is going to hurt me more than it does you, son. Oh, boy. <laughs> I thought he was out of his mind. But I realized when I got children and I began to, to raise them that that was such a true statement about it. Well, I'm going to close with the teaching for now. And I'm going to try to focus on what you're writing in here. I hope we have some, some prayer needs. Uh, there, let me get these glasses on. Help me cheat just a little bit. Uh, I'm hearing someone, uh, Karen, I see you there in Jefferson City. God bless you. Bless you uh, uh, with it. Uh, somebody tell me I was right on. I see my friend, Patricia Harper, uh, uh, saying we must always lend a hand. That is so important. And uh, Patricia, when you know it's right, and you're supposed to move from where you're at, uh, you know, we'll we'll try to help find a trailer and get you moved to where you're supposed to be. You need to grab that word and pull it into your into your spirit. Thank you, Mike Mason, a long time friend for praying for my sister and uh, just, uh, pray, you know, keep encouraging her. Um, looking down there at my friend, A.C. Cordell is on from Detroit. Uh, oh, he's being held up. Lord, bring no delays on those flights. Get him out of Atlanta and get him, get him home, Father. We just come in agreement with it. Um, someone's asking a question, uh, and uh, how how am I? Well, listen, we're all shunned at some point. Somebody is writing that um, uh, we're not just because we're not received doesn't mean that you can't be salt. You know, conviction comes through us being who we are. And uh, we thank you uh, for writing that, but just keep being who you are. They don't have to receive you totally. We can still be that salt. Let me just tell you, salt purifies. 
And in that process, there's a sting to it as well. And Father, uh, we just declare over the resting place in Royal Oak, uh, Michigan. Father, you had a word uh, some time ago on the call, but we just come in agreement for this this uh, work there, resting place. We just declare a breakout of your glory, a breakout of signs and wonders. We release the power of God there. And Father, we just thank you for for Karen, and we just declare her marriage is being healed. We just declare that what you're doing uh, there is going to just smooth out some things, not through compromise, Father, but through conviction. So, Father, we just come in agreement for that marriage being healed in Yeshua's name. Trying to go back up through here. I don't, sometimes I, I can't look at them all, especially when I'm teaching with that, trying to see if there's other prayer need. Uh, uh, looking here, uh, somebody is writing me there about being there for them. Amen. Listen, the body of Christ, we've got to become fitly joined together. I see my, uh, uh, friend, Michael Carroll. Uh, let me just tell you, I agree with you. I just made that a statement. It's over the body of Christ. Uh, there is a major attack on the health of people. Father, we just declare healing and health. We pray a protective hedge of the blood of Christ and the word of God around the ecclesia, the praying church, and we rebuke every assignment in Jesus, in Yeshua's name. We rebuke it, and we just declare that you're going to do exceedingly abundantly above. And Father, we release healing, health, and well-being we, you, we stand on your promise. Lord, you said we no longer war for your promise, but from them. And we war from the promise that no weapon formed against us will prosper. All right. Uh, trying to see here. We pray for that revival in St. Augustine. We come in agreement with that. I think it's Martin. We come in agreement with you for an outpouring there. Um we uh, thank you there, uh, uh, Destiny. We thank you for your prayers for my sister. Thank you for that. And we just come in agreement with your prayers and with your declaration. Uh, Lord, we just come in with uh, L27 and we pray for her father's salvation or their father's salvation. Uh, we, uh, Lord, uh, they're saying that he's toward the end of his life, but father, we just declare that before the end of life in this existence, he's going to, he's going to embrace the convicting powers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And through that father, he's going to turn his heart over to God and be redeemed, redeemed, redeemed. Father, we just declare, well, I'm trying to read this here. Uh, we just declare for a direction uh, for the, the divine connection. We declare that, Father. We come in agreement for you doing that. And someone, DSAW, need, need prayer. We just declare, Lord, uh, we come in agreement with you giving wisdom, you pouring out your spirit with it. Thank you, AC, for praying for me. Thank you for... Um, uh, uh, with that, uh, AC is praying for a financial miracle. Listen, we need $400,000 to build this wilderness camp for adolescents. We just know that God can do this. We know that he will do this. And so we thank you, AC, for those prayers. And we come in agreement with it. Trying to look to see if anybody else is see. Okay. Got some coming in. Thank, we see someone there and Hershey, Pennsylvania, we bless you for being on here tonight. Um, thank you, Destiny, for that prayer uh, around every school and every county and every state. We just declare. And, and let me address that. You know, it, it was a, a terrible shooting. I haven't heard any details about what caused it, who did it, or anything in Alabama. Let, let me just tell you, we, there's a lot of, there's a lot of very sick people and there, and when sickness is not dealt with properly, it can, not all sickness is, all sickness is from the devil, but not all sickness is the devil 
but when you don't deal with it, you become sicker and you become demonic. And there are a lot of demonic people operating, people that go then to schools and kill children. That That's beyond just being angry. That's demonic. And we've got to take the shame. We've got to encourage people around us and take the shame off of them. It It's hard to report your child. It's hard to report a loved one. But if you've got concerns about their safety and the safeties of others, we've got to step up and do that. Now, uh, someone wrote me a ugly email the other day because I'm talking this way, but I want to tell you, it's called responsibility. And we need we we don't need to be our kid's best friend. We need to be their parent first and be a friend to them. And we need to be there in their life to speak some things. All right, I'm um, uh, trying to see if there's any others here uh, with it. Uh, Father, there's somebody, uh, I'm getting a name, Robert. And uh, Lord, it's just been hard. There's been some death around them, premature death, and their heart is broken. They're shattered. So we just say to you, Robert, we just say to you, fresh hope. <clears throat> and as that fresh hope comes to you, greater expectation is going to come. There's also a, uh, a pastor or either pastor's wife. You're watching. You haven't said anything, but you're there in the ministry uh, with at least one of you. The ministry has just been hard and the marriage is challenged. And I just want to speak to you. Find some help. Find some help. My email is claynash at claynash.org. Find some help. Find someone that will help you and your spouse find the help that you need to get your marriage. Listen, you're needed. You're needed in the body of Christ. And once your marriage is healed, you're going to be a source of strength and healing to other people. Um uh, someone is saying here, forgiveness helps. Certainly. I, I believe the majority of sickness in the body of Christ today, uh, if not all of it, goes back to unforgiveness. There's several, at least two YouTube uh, uh, messages I've done on forgiveness and closure uh, with it. We've got to be people of forgiveness. Someone, thank you for this. Uh, it's DSAW. Uh, saying their forgiveness helped them so much. Thank you for that. Uh, my friend Mike Mason is saying about forgiveness. It's a true point of a healing our hearts and our mind. These people that are, that are taking other people's lives, shedding innocent blood, most of them, many of them, it, probably all of them have unforgiveness in their heart. And so we've got to carry this in a very mighty way of being able to forgive. You know, someone posted um, recently about uh, being offended. And I, I said to them, an offense is a choice. They knew this, but I, I just pointed out it's a choice. I don't choose to be offended. That word in the Greek is the word scandalon is where we get our present day word scandal. I hope you've read the book, Bait of Satan. If you haven't, you need to look it up. John Bevere, you need to you need to read that book about three times every year. But what it was, it was a gaming stick. A pit was dug. They put sharp sticks in the bottom. They covered it with leaves. They hung this piece of meat, and the animal ever went for the meat. It was loosely tied to this gaming stick. It came loose, and the animal fell to his death. He didn't have to. That animal, some animals were discerning enough. They wouldn't go after it because they knew it was a trap. And it's the same way when people do it wrong. I was hurt years ago by an apostle. Tremendously, tremendously hurt. That's what my story was at first. But then I came to realize this man did not hurt me. I allowed myself to become hurt. I allowed myself to become hurt. And I can remember the day that forgiveness was spoke. I mean, I've been forgiving, but I spoke closure and I spoke to the mountain and it was removed. And so it's just so, so key for us. Let me see if there's any other prayer needs that I haven't covered. I uh, uh, love this from Michael. It said, love always seeks for the highest good for people in those situations. It, it begins at the cross. Yeah, 
when we stand at the cross, the, all the ground is level. I don't care if you're an apostle or a rocket scientist or a genius or whoever, but when we stand the cross, the, the ground is level there. And God is looking for us to stand at the cross. I want to just pray a um, prayer over everyone now to close out tonight's live stream. I hope this is good for you. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm sharing things that Susan and I can look back on in our journey to becoming who we are, that we're very pivotal, very significant. And so that's how I try to choose as I pray, uh, with it. Let me see what one right here, uh, before I go on, uh, some, my friend Patricia is asking, can we pray for my sister while we're on here? You know, thank you, Patricia. That, that is a, that's not just a good idea. That's a God uh, point there we need to do. And so I'm going to begin by praying for her. And then I'm going to pray for all of you and anybody that will be listening to this live stream later. But let me close with this as well. If you can, join us in Conway, Arkansas this week. Oh, I... I I'm looking for words to say, but I believe history will be made this week as hungry people come together with great and godly leadership and we pray for the nation. And we've got an incredible facility and it's 30 minutes from the airport in Little Rock. It's a tremendous uh, facility. We're going to have great worship, great. Uh, it's not going to be a conference conference, but we're going to have leaders, our host on the call that I've been doing for five years. They're going to be sharing. We're going to have particular prayer points that we're going to be lifting up. So if you can go to claynash.org, look there. All the hotel information is there. We still have room. I'm a little bit surprised, but we still have room. People are busy. No, we're not live streaming it. We just do not have the capability. We are going to record it, video it, and make the videos available. You can go right now to my website and purchase those downloads. When I say video, we're going to have a digital download where you can load it right into your phone, right into your iPad, right into your PC, and you can watch it right there at home. Make some popcorn if you want to while you're watching it uh, with that. All right, trying to see uh, if there's anything on there. We're going to pray for Nan. Uh, uh, somebody, thank you, uh, saying that these live streams are such a blessing. I'm honored to do it. It's who I am. It's who God has uh, graced me to be. So, well, Father, we just lift up my sister Nan, and we just declare into the cancer in her body, and we command it to line up with the word of the Lord. It says, by stripes, she's healed. Father, we declare to that cancer, you must come into alignment. God's word is said, by his stripes, she is healed. And by the stripes of Yeshua, uh, she has been healed. Father, we just declare healing over her. And even what the radiation and chemo has done to her immune system, we speak healing. We thank you, Father. She's down to... Uh, uh, 11 more chemos and five more radiation uh, treatments, Father. We thank you the tumor is shrinking. We thank you for, but Father, give her the strength and the fight to battle through the last of this. Father, we declare peace and love and healing and health and the anointing and the authority of Yeshua over Nan. And we pray a protective hedge of the blood of Christ and the word of God around her. And we rebuke any assignment of hell we rebuke every sickness. We rebuke every infirmity. We rebuke every disease. And we call her healed, healthy, whole, and well. And we declare that over her in Yeshua's name. Now, Father, I lift up everyone that watches this streaming. And I declare healing and health over them. I declare getting settled in their true identity, which comes from you. I declare the ability to embrace and become more valuable so they can bring value to many other people. Now, Father, we just declare that your goodness and your peace and your grace and your mercy surrounds us every day of our life. So, Father, we just release a peace 
that surpasses understanding, all understanding, and we release it to the people that will watch this streaming in Yeshua's name. And Father, we lift up the Josiah Company Convocation this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is we pray over the United States and we pray over all 50 states. Father, we declare your will be done in Yeshua's name. And Father, I just see one other one come in. We've got someone there, uh, uh, a friend named Jess and an Uncle Roger, and they're both battling cancer. And so, Father, we just declared uh, Jess and Roger healed. We declare that cancer lining up with the word of God. And we just declare healing and health to them now in Yeshua's name. Amen. Listen, God bless you. Thank you for joining me. Um, you know, studio is not perfect. Streaming. I hope the sound is good. You're here with us. We care about you. We're not trying to build a following. We're trying to empower you to go build a company of people that's going to be mighty in the earth. See, I believe the people that will watch a streaming like this, they are his story makers, not just history makers. Listen, the true history is made is when you make his story known to all mankind. God bless you. We'll be here on the first Sunday of May, and uh, that's coming up real close to my birthday. And uh, this is my 70th year. Uh, someone told me recently I didn't look 70, and I, I just like them. I'm praying for every day. And someone else said, man, I thought you'd a lot older. And said, and I said, look, it's not the age. It's how many miles you got on you and how many bulls you rode and some of the other things I did as a young, foolish, foolish man. But anyway, we love you much. Soon then I bless you. Harley is just over here. He's uh, been on the edge of his chair all night. And uh, we're just looking forward to connecting with those that come to the Josiah Company Convocation. God bless you.